17 year old girl with severe dysmenorrhea with vomiting and some bowel symptoms during periods in there she has been taken taking analgesics and she was having no relief and ultrasound was that normal uh, so such a patient is coming very common such this patients are coming to you such a 17 year old young patient three or four years of menarche uh, coming to you with a dysmenorrhea will you uh, suspect endometriosis or what is your plan sir yeah see as per the latest isre guidelines 2018 endometriosis is diagnosed mostly based on the history in that dysmenorrhea in that triple dysmenorrhea if the girl has triple dysmenorrhea that is premenstrual menstrual and postmenstrual and dull aching pain throughout the cycle and she is not been relieved in spite of taking the analgesics the usual ones then your mostly correct in diagnosing endometriosis in olden days we used to say laparoscopy but now used laparoscopy just to diagnose endometriosis especially in a young girl like this 17 year old it's not at all necessary to do a invasive test like that now ultrasound will एंडोमेट्रोटिक typical endometriotic cyst as in adults and as i was telling there is no need to do laparoscopy at all especially in adolescents if the girl has dysmenorrhea which is not relieved by usual medication then you are not wrong in diagnosing endometriosis and we must start treatment in fact okay she has, has gone one, one step ahead okay. and told that like in olden days for tuberculosis we used to give empirical treatment and if the patient improved we diagnose tuberculosis similarly you start the treatment of endometriosis if you don't have any definitive diagnostic uh, test positive and if the patient improves that diag- and diagnosis of endometriosis is almost certain sir, sir one doubt uh, see uh, two doubts is that one is that how frequently you are seeing nowadays adolescent endometriosis second doubt is that second question is that in this case what will be your first choice drug that means or oh, do you advise again analgesics or you have the order in which you will pick up it's an adolescent girl yeah it's not very common in adolescents as such because as such the menstrual cycles are not very regular you know one of the important theories for endometriosis is retrograde menstruation unless the girl has some anomaly maybe like cryptomenorrhea in such patients endometriosis definitely is a bigger possibility sir, otherwise you, you raised one important point actually that i wanted so whenever you are suspecting endometriosis ultrasound has some value is that you have to rule out uterine anomalies okay Correct. whenever the an anomalies associated with endometriosis is common yes. that is one point i wanted to raise okay yes very correct so in fact the patient may have uh, some sort of a cryptomenorrhea hello sir uh, sound is breaking sir and, uh, is that means definitely she is have that is behind endometriosis and we have to do ultrasound a higher resolution ultrasound can easily pick up most of the anomalies in the uterus and in the tubes and that would give a clue towards the diagnosis it is not that common in adolescent age group i am sure you also agree with me ah yes sir uh, yeah uh, so, but, uh, but 
but you have to uh, not like olden days where we never used to suspect endometriosis now the moral is that you whenever a patient not responding to analgesics you have to suspect as one yeah. diagnosis of endometriosis because endometriosis is a progressive disease Definitely. if you don't treat and diagnose it early it is a it will progress uh, unknowingly it will progress uh, coming to management such a patient is there in an adolescent uh, what is your drug of choice first drug of choice and what yeah. is the theory behind it of using that drugs yeah see now whether you diagnosed it and then you start treatment or whether you start off with empirical treatment the first choice is obviously uh, anti prostaglandin that is mefenamic acid which will double up as both in you know, a analgesic as well as it's an nsaid as well as it will reduce the amount of blood loss so it will help both ways and that definitely would be the first line of choice and of course later you may also consider low dose oc pills coc pills and nowadays we have got this low dose oc pills we can give continuously uh, it need not be cyclical the aim is to reduce the amount of blood loss as much as menstruation as much as possible so you can give either 84 days continuously or you can give go for even 128 days that is But, what i also wanted to tell you that Uh, the, the two things which are what low dose are correctly told. It is no need of high dose or zippers. Low dose is enough. How uh, how do you give uh, cyclical or continuous? As sir correctly told, continuous can be given, but you give a break in between. Why? Because patient has to be counselled. Because otherwise she will go in for amenorrhea. She will be more concerned. That is exactly. why uh, in between a break is needed. Actually, that is, yes. That is, that's true so that's why counseling is very important you have to convince the patient as well as more importantly her mother rather than the patient because she will be more concerned we have to tell the idea is to you know totally stop the menstruation uh, that way the retrograde menstruation will be you know controlled and uh, if they are counseled probably they will understand better and they will accept it better uh, but all said and done there is some hesitation to start hormonal pills in that younger age under age so in the countries now in the western countries even they you know prescribe the lng ius see lng ius mm -hmm. first came as a long acting contraceptive even for adolescents if that can be done for as a contraceptive as a treatment for endometriosis because taking pills every day may not be acceptable to some girls mm -hmm. and they don't want to reveal it that they are taking tablets so if they are willing and if you convince them lngis is not at all a bad idea because once you insert that it is working for 5 years and it is locally acting and it will totally create amenorrhea that's what actually we wanted and it is reversible so once she gets married we can remove that but again this requires much more convincing because it is yeah it 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 is not at all easily acceptable uh, uh intrauterine system in a young girl is not at all acceptable sir one more but question but at the same But, time yeah uh, tell me what is the role of dynogest here see uh, patient has uh, using low dose osip now the dynogest is very common things are yes, available yes. so if most of the companies are coming out with different brands of dynogest yes. behind us So, what is the role of dynogest in adolescence? Would you give or? Uh, of course, uh, as you would agree with me, endometriosis is a marathon run. It's not a sprint. It's a long haul treatment. So, we have to do a lot of mix and matching, and we have to give a course of OC pills for maybe few months, six months to one year, and then, of course, we have to change the drug, or we may have to mix and match. So, dynogest has the advantage of not only uh, being a hormonal uh, treatment. it has also anti angiogenic effect that is very important see endometriosis is now considered almost like a malignancy except that you know because one of the theories of endometriosis is metastatic theory and that happens all the time in malignancies and in the metastasized area it has to grow and to grow you need well neovascularization and this neovascularization is antagonized so that it has an additional advantage 
it also reduces estrogen which has three to four pronged attack that's a damage and it has got least side effects compared to the oc pills so that is more acceptable maybe you can start off with danogest as a first line also but usually it is taken as a second line in adolescent especially and it can be given continuously for nearly one year or two years okay do you do so, that ashwat uh, na nah, yes yes and so uh, about adolescent endometriosis five points which sir told i just summarize it and then we'll go to the next question so you have to suspect adolescent endometriosis and uh, uh, you have to these symptoms that is a suspicion you can be substantiated by ultrasound Diagnostic laparoscopy or laparoscopy doesn't have any role in diagnosis according to new X-ray guidelines. Okay, and uh, you start with analgesics. Not responding to analgesics is the man, and low dose osipril is the start. You can use diagnosis. Low dose osipril continuous. How long doesn't have any because it's a long disease. That is why sir was telling and sir told the advantages of diagnosis. Okay, it is anti-estrogenic, anti-angiogenic, and it has a central action also. That is part of the advantage of diagnosis. Thank you.